know, it's very interesting uh, having shifted to Dubai because donor sperm is not an option. Uh, we've actually started a program in using uh, stem cells and exosomes uh, for patients who have failed microtesi. Uh, stem cells are basically cells that can uh, support other cells to do whatever they want to do. So we get either stem cells from bone marrow or in Dubai, we use uh, patients own adipose tissue. Uh, with a liposuction um, and it takes about four weeks for about 100 million stem cells to grow. These are mesenchymal stem cells uh, and about four weeks later uh, we bring the patient back and then we inject it into the Reti testis in hopes that these mesenchymal stem cells are called MSCs uh, will support small foci of spermatogenesis. So if there are some small areas of sperm production hopefully these mesenchymal stem cells will actually stimulate spermatogenesis in this area. The other option we have not explored much is something called exosomes. So exosomes are basically vesicles that are derived from the stem cells. So they are not stem cells because they don't carry any DNA, uh, but they can do all the functions of the stem cell. So they carry the lipids, the microRNA, the protein, and basically help the target tissue either decrease inflammation support spermatogenesis, support vasculogenesis. It can do all the functions of a stem cell, but it doesn't carry the genetic material. We still don't know much about how exosomes can be used in men's health, in erectile dysfunction and azoospermia, uh, but in patients who've previously had sperm or maturation arrest where there is some germ cells, I think exosomes can be an option if patients don't want to undergo the whole process of stem cells. Whereas in men who've never had any sperm, and microtesi shows Sertoli cell only syndrome where there are no germ cells, then I think stem cells should be a good option because we need to grow the spermatogonia for the few that can be present inside the testis from the ground up. So that brings up a very important point here. In India, the concept of microtesi is building and when there is a failed microtesi, we tend to go towards other options or at least a repeat microtesi. So that is what we offer. The stem cells are very primitive in India yet. However, there are some centers that claim to do stem cells. So what we do is whenever a patient asks for a stem cell, we are also in the process of building our own protocol or which patients will benefit from a stem cell and we strongly believe that whenever the patient has had spermatogenesis or at least has had poor quality sperms or they had sperm in the ejaculate maybe around three four years before somebody for whom the sperm has been documented those are the patients that are likely to respond to stem cells better right however we are not still in the like that method of where we take and culture it and use it but we are still exploring the options and uh, we are nowadays doing bone marrow and adipose tissue for stem cell harvest. Excellent, I think you bring up a very good point because a lot of patients fall prey to thinking stem cells is going to cure everything, right? It's going to cure aging, frailty, Alzheimer's disease, uh, bone pain and azoospermia as well, right? So I think patients have to be very careful and start learning about what stem cells are, where they need to be got, what is stem cell, what is not stem cell, what can happen with just blood derived stem cells, what stem cells need to be cultured in proper GMP facilities with good sterile conditions. And I think uh, patients just need to be very careful uh, for what they are signing up for. Um, several clinics in the US got shut down uh, because of both infection reasons, uh, because of claims of uh, stem cells doing things that they were never intended to do. So I think patients need to be counseled properly. And patients are also getting very educated, very savvy. They're also doing their own research before they sign up for these things. Uh, but because azoospermia is such a desperate condition, they've undergone a surgical sperm retrieval where there is no sperm and they're desperate biologically father their own child. Patients will do just about anything. And I think we as urologists also need to be careful in one, telling them what stem cells are, uh, not just dismissing them and trying to at least offer the right treatments for these patients. Yeah, so in India, basically now we are getting the patients that are educated well about the condition as well as. So I think for the audience, let us define what is a stem cell, what is the source and exactly what is the protocol which you are using and what benefit you intend to receive at what time intervals. Got it. So the protocol that we are using, it's called fertile study uh, in Dubai. We just got the approval from the Dubai Health Authority or the DHA. It is a protocol where patients undergo a fat collection or a liposuction by the plastic surgeon and the uh, fat is basically cultured to provide MSCs or mesenchymal stem cells. So these are not spermatogonial stem cells, these are not testicular stem cells, these are just mesenchymal stem cells. So it takes about four weeks for about 100 million cells to grow in the lab and then the lab usually lets the patient as well as us know that the cells are ready to be injected. We then bring the patient back at about four weeks and then inject it under anesthesia into the Reti testis. So this is the junction between the testis and the epididymis and this way we can actually get these stem cells to go inside the seminiferous tubules, not just a percutaneous injection 
a blind injection where we hope some of the cells will go into the tubules and some may be outside, but more of the cells to actually go inside the tubules and hopefully support spermatogenesis. We don't have any data on this. We just started the program a few months ago, but uh, this is definitely an exciting area of research. We hope to get results. We hope to identify the patient population where this would work in. We think it's going to work in some select patients. We still don't know the answer, but more to come on that. So we are building evidence around the stem cell. Do you think adding recombinant gonadotrophins? So there is a, now a trend to use, say, a more specialized form of gonadotrophins, which is more costly also. That is, we are using in men with azospermia in a limited hormonal setup. Do you think adding these gonadotrophins will help the stem cell injection also? So if they have low gonadotrophins and the levels are uh, ideally within the normal range, because in men who have sperm production issues, your gonadotropin levels should be higher. And so if it is not higher, I think supplementing these patients with gonadotropins to be the levels at the upper limit of normal uh, or above the normal, I think will be a good idea. So if it is not near the upper limit of normal or above the normal, then I think giving gonadotropins will be a good idea for these patients.